This is Wayne Johnson. Welcome to part two of our lecture on African swine fever as delivered in the Philippines in February 2020. How is ASF transmitted and how is it managed to get uh, around China so quickly and around the uh, Asia and around the world uh, in such a short period of time? Well, we believe that at first that African swine fever entered China through infected pork that was coming from China. That was, uh, it was probably sausages that were brought in from Russia that uh, contained some, uh, some African swine fever virus. This African swine fever virus uh, was fed to pigs through uh, the garbage feeding that uh, somehow this meat ended up in the into some pigs, and then uh, as those pigs became uh, became infected, they were sent to other farms. Some of them were sent to slaughter the slaughterhouses. Then the ASF infected meat was then going to uh, various end users, to restaurants, to various kitchens, and then the kitchen scraps and the restaurant scraps were fed back to pigs at farms, and then a cycle began of the, of the, of the, of the ASF virus uh, going, uh, going from, from the farms to the slaughterhouses to the restaurants back to the farms, and the amount of African swine fever virus in uh, some areas of North China began to increase more and more. Then finally, the trucks that were carrying pigs from the slaughter, you know, to the slaughterhouse and from the slaughterhouse began to carry the disease. And it was the the trucks that began to spread the virus everywhere that it uh, everywhere that it went. And uh, the, so these trucks were carrying the African swine fever virus from infected farms uh, to other farms and from, from the farms to the feed mills. And then the uh, feed system began to become involved in the uh, transmission of African swine fever. And the trucks going to the slaughterhouse were continually bringing it back to the farms and carrying pigs with ASF all over the country. The trucks, uh, cleaning of trucks is a real problem. I had a fellow in Changzhou a few years ago told me that uh, no one was going to make him clean up his truck. Uh, certainly we've had some, uh, even before ASF, we had some very contentious relationships with some truck drivers. They just refuse to clean their trucks. Nobody pays them to do it. And the Farmers are reluctant to put pressure on the truck drivers because they want to sell their pigs and uh, the trucks are provided by the guys who are buying the pigs and if the if nobody will come to the farm and pick up the, the pigs then the farm would be in some trouble and uh, nobody has had the fortitude uh, to uh, make these people clean up their trucks. Uh, some of them are maintained in very bad shape. Uh, the ASF virus is on the highway. Uh, the trucks are open and the manure and feces and blood from the trucks, the excretions of pigs is on the highway. And sometimes the pigs themselves are on the highway and it is a real problem. It's hard work cleaning up a truck. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, it's not fun and it is uh, a lot of hard work involved cleaning up the truck. Doing a good job is not easy either. This truck, this uh, uh, on the right here, you see a part of an aluminum truck that uh, was supposed to be clean, but if you look at it very carefully, uh, it's not it's not clean at all. Actually, this truck is is really quite dirty, and there's quite enough uh, would be quite enough African swine fever virus on a truck like this to uh, cause some problems. Here is a boot that hit you. Obviously, it's been cleaned. They, somebody has tried to clean this boot, but it is really very, very dirty. And it's one of the problems is if uh, 
you cannot really get boots very clean. It's really hard work to clean boots, and so the dirty boots and the clean boots should be kept uh, keep be kept separate. And if you're really worried about uh, the uh, cleanliness of boots, the cleanliness of shoes, you make people change their footwear and leave their dirty shoes outside the farm, and that the dirty shoes stay on the dirty side, and people put on clean shoes when, when after they go to the to the clean side uh, in their bare feet. This is a picture from the north of China uh, illustrating the problem that would they have there with in cold weather. Everybody knows that it gets cold in north China and it's not unusual at all for it to be cold there in the winter time. In fact, it's very, very cold and there needs to be some provision for the cleaning of trucks in the winter time. We've had a lot of trouble with this because diseases like PED, porcine epidemic diarrhea, and uh, cl classical swine fever, PERS, have all been carried to farms by these dirty trucks. And we were having a lot of trouble with these before ASF came along. And now we're dealing with uh, an ASF problem. And not only do the pigs get sick, but they die in very large numbers. And we've really had to make some changes in the way we consider the sanitation of trucks. You need some kind of a facility with hot water so you can get these trucks clean. The first step in cleaning a truck is, uh, is first of all, to remove the remove remove the the dirty material uh, to get the feces and the and the uh, anything else that's left over in the in the truck to get it out and get the big pieces out and then the next step is to is to hose the truck down and get the big particles of stuff off the stuff that can be removed by by spraying with water is taken away and then the next step is to put some kind of detergent, uh, the, you need some kind of soap, some kind of detergent that will remove the, uh, the material from its contact with the truck that it's adhered to the truck. You need some kind of detergent that's going to release the virus and the feces and the urine and uh, the other material, saliva and blood and other things that are on the truck, some, some strong detergent. Then the fourth step is to clean the truck, uh, to wash away the, the uh, everything uh, very, very uh, thoroughly. And then after the truck has been inspected, after, ins after inspection, then to disinfect the truck. And you cannot disinfect anything that's dirty. We have to have a clean surface and there needs to be some inspection. Then after it's been disinfected, is allowed to dry. And then the inside of the cab of the truck needs to be cleaned as well. And the, these are the steps involved in properly cleaning a truck. There are a number of inputs that come into the farm. Pigs come into the farm. Uh, they're, foam, you know, they're food for humans, uh, people, uh, feedstuffs, and uh, some other fomites, the, some of the tools and whatnot that are used in pig farms. But it's trucks that are, that are the big problem. And most of the time, whenever uh, a farm has been infected. It has not been because of people. It has not been because of food. It's either because of some infected feed or some infected trucks or some pigs that were sick were, were brought into the farm and, and presented the disease uh, in that way. People, uh, everybody wants to uh, worry about the people. It's very, very difficult to control people. It's uh, actually peop people are willing to control other people very, very much. They love to do it. They love to build walls. They love to exclude people. Uh, it's a, it gives people a real feeling of power. 
but uh, people can be a, a concern. I prefer that the people uh, don't live inside the farm, that only the essential personnel remain on the farm, that the non-essential personnel uh, re re reside outside the farm, uh, and uh, they, they shouldn't be allowed any contact with, with pigs if they're working for a pig farm. They shouldn't have pigs at home. But uh, lunch could be provided for the people working inside the farm, uh, the 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 uh, food can be cooked outside the farm. Uh, maybe have somebody bring the food to the farm. Then it, that re reduces the uh, levels of complexity. Uh, the bookkeeping and other administration uh, could be done off site. That doesn't have to be done on the farm. That could be done uh, someplace else and reduce the number of people that you have to have. And you need guards on the site uh, 24 seven 365 to prevent. Uh, theft and mishaps and trespass. There has been a lot of deliberate uh, infection of farms, some sabotage with uh, certainly with drones, even in some parts of, the, of China. Uh, people have used drones to carry uh, infected material inside the farms. Uh, this sort of thing has been going on for a long period of time. It's not uh, new to uh, ASF. Uh, it's been going on for, for years, but uh, Certainly, ASF has, uh, has brought it out. The disinfection of clothing, if you're worried about that, you could use glutaraldehyde in the rinse water. Uh, I think it's better to use glutaraldehyde than it is to use uh, a PMPS because PMS will, PMPS will change your clothes to a very strange color. Showering and residences, uh, no personal items inside the farm. And by inside the farm, I'm talking about the area where the pigs are at. No cell phones, no clothing, no personal clothing, nothing uh, of no personal items uh, inside the farm where the pigs are at. Again, uh, the uh, I try to uh, reduce the levels of complexity. And the workers should shower to get into the farm, uh, to get into the outer per perimeter, and again, to pass from the outer court to the inner court. Visitors, uh, the uh, technicians and consultants uh, for equipment maintenance, they need to come into the farm. We have to have some way to get these people in. Uh, people who are involved with pig genetics, people involved with pig health, people involved with pig nutrition, uh, they can visit the facility. They're necessary. The sales personnel and solicitors, there's no reason for them to come onto the farm, so they should be uh, kept out. Downtime, if you haven't seen pigs uh, recently, uh, then overnight downtime is sufficient. If you can verify someone has have absolutely having no recent pig contact, then overnight is fine. Uh, even if, even if uh, you know, they've been at home, they've been eating pork at home, so what? It's not a big deal. What we're worried about is if they've had pig contact. Uh, the... Uh, the, they come in, they take a shower uh, before they uh, before they go in to see the pigs. Uh, take a shower to get into the inner to the in, get into the outer court, and then take another shower to get in to see the pigs. Uh, we're going to be fine. Uh, personnel can move down the system some, from sow farms to growing growing units in the same day as the pigs go. It's no problem. If the pigs can go, the people can go. Um, not going backwards up through the system, certainly then we need to uh, probably have a 48-hour downtime if there's been a, a contact with pigs. Uh, so those are whose activities we can't verify. 48-hour uh, downtime, if they've contacted uh, uh, ASF virus, uh, uh, we need a 48-hour downtime. There's no reason for it to be longer than 48 hours. Uh, people may have extended downtimes for various reasons associated with fear and uncertainty, but uh, we do not believe that the virus uh, will... Uh, persist in people uh, longer than 24 hours, but uh, so we, we give a 48-hour downtime if there's been uh, unknown pig contact or if they have been in contact with the ASF virus. The world is, uh, is dirty. Uh, we uh, 
So we, we try to have some kind of a zone of local control around the farm. Uh, this may be a lane or a, so, you know, a, a, a road or something that we could block off to have some, some local control of people getting uh, close to the farm. Uh, so the siting of farms is very, very important. If you put them, put the farms in a, uh, in a place where there's a very high pressure, it's not going to work very well, folks. The, the system we use, we recommend is a three part system. First of all, we have a, an area of local control. We have a, a farm courtyard. The farm courtyard is where the people eat. It may be where they live. It may be where there's some offices and this sort of thing. And then the third part is the animal area. The farm courtyard we consider to be a clean area, so there has to be showering to get into the farm courtyard. You leave your dirty boots outside. And then the animal area is another clean area. You leave your dirty, you leave the, the shoe shoes and footwear and clothing that you wore in the courtyard those don't come into the animal area and whenever you come out it's a reversing of the procedure it's a similar situation to if we were in a submarine underneath the ocean that we have outside we have high pressure of uh, the water or we might say in the terms of the biosecurity we have a a high pressure of disease in the dirty zone, and inside the submarine is what we might call the clean zone. This is the area where we have excluded the water, and we've excluded the disease from the clean zone. If someone is going to go from the clean zone out into the, out into the water while the submarine is down under the water, we have to have some way for the people to go. Uh, we certainly can't just open the door we talk about a screen door and a screen door in a submarine you can't uh, you can't have that because the water just rushes in you have to have some method for people to get from the from the dry side to the wet side and from the wet side back into the dry side and this is uh, in submarines where they are shooting torpedoes they have a very complex mechanism that where they they fill the uh, they have the uh, they pump the torpedo bay out they pump it dry and then they put in a torpedo and then they close the uh, the doors they let the water come back inside and then they open the outside door and fire the tor torpedo out into the out into the water and then they close everything up and pump the water out and start over again. It's the same thing with biosecurity. We have a three compartment exchange system. We have a clean side. Uh, this could be like the this could be like the dry side in a in a submarine. We have a transition. This is the uh, lock lock up uh, room, the locking cell, and we have the the dirty area. This could be the wet side. And so to get people from the from the uh, dry side of the submarine, we they go in they go into the uh, to the uh, the portico of the of the cell and then they go into the this the cell door is is opened up the cell is closed and they let water into the cell and then they open the outside door and you can go out into the out into the water whenever you come back they you uh, come into the dirty side they uh, open the door to the to the to the transition cell you walk in there, they close the door, the water is pumped out, and you walk back into the dry side. It's a transitional system. In the same way, if, we have, if we're marketing pigs, we have some kind of a transition area where uh, the, the pigs are, uh, are taken before they're taken out into the dirty, into the dirty world. And if people are coming into the farm, the world is dirty. The transition area uh, typically is a shower. Uh, and then 
after they go through the shower, they are in, can come into the clean zone. They leave all their dirty clothes behind in the before they go into the shower. And then after they come out, then they uh, go into the into the clean side and they're ready to uh, to uh, go into to see the pigs or go into the farm courtyard. Putting it all together, we have a five compartment exchange system for people entering the farm. They come from the dirty side, they go through a shower, they get into the farm courtyard. Again, the courtyard is where all the offices and the eating area is. Uh, if, if there are a situation where people are living on the farm, uh, then that would be in the farm courtyard. And then they would shower to, uh, to get into the clean area, which is where the pigs are. We actually consider it to be a six compartment system that we have the, the outside, the control area on the outside uh, of the farm. If uh, people are going to be coming into the farm, we have to ask the question if they're going to come in and why they're coming in. If we have a reason for them to come into the farm, uh, then we can open the door and let them come in, let them leave their dirty shoes and dirty clothes on the dirty side shower in to the farm courtyard in the farm courtyard you may have them to stay there uh, uh, for some period of time and maybe overnight and then after that they shower and go into the into the clean side of the farm for marketing pigs uh, we have the same concept that we are going to be taking pigs through the through the farm through some kind of a of a transit station and then the, after the pigs have been left at the transit station, they could be picked up and, and taken out and back out into the world, which is dirty. And the way that that works is that uh, we have the farm truck goes to the transit station, and we have one truck at a time at, at, at this, uh, at this uh, one truck at a time at this trans transfer station. We don't have the outside truck and the farm truck uh, at, at this place at the same time. We have only one truck at a time here. We don't have two trucks there uh, at the same time. That is a recipe for disaster. So we need to have a transit station that is large enough to, to hold uh, all of the pigs that are going to be, uh, going to be shipped out. And the farm truck goes there, fills the transit station up, the farm truck is clean, goes back to the farm. The outside truck, after the farm truck is gone, the outside truck can come. Of course, this truck needs to be clean and inspected also. The outside truck, it has to be clean, but it's not going to be a truck that is coming from the inside of the farm. And the outside truck then is filled up with the pigs while the farm truck is gone. The After the Outside truck goes away. The transit station by the tr is cleaned up and sprayed, disinfected, uh, cleaned thoroughly by the workers in the transit station. And uh, obviously, the transit station is going to have to have some heat, and it's uh, uh, going to have to have hot water and some uh, some other uh, provisions for the people to to stay there. And so these transit stations are not cheap, but uh, they're very, very essential for uh, maintaining biosecurity. We should have had these already, but we now we see people putting these in because of the biosecurity requirements uh, that uh, ASF has placed upon us. We needed these already to stop things like PED and classical swine fever and uh, PERS. Some farms are just not big enough to have a transit uh, uh, system, so they uh, to have a transit station. So we have they can do what we call a transit truck, and so the the transit truck uh, picks up the pigs from the farm. It goes and meets the dirty truck, and then after that, it directly goes to a truck wash. Then it is dried, and maybe even it's tested. Uh, for uh, to be uh, by PCR, 
in some situations that uh, certainly is a good idea. And then after it uh, is known to be clean, then it can go back to the farm and the cycle can start over again. The dirty truck uh, uh, doesn't come anywhere near the farm. This is not an ideal system, but indeed uh, we have been successful in keeping uh, ASF out of some what you might call medium-sized farms, uh, several hundred several hundred sows, probably not quite big enough to have their own transit station, but uh, they certainly need to have a, uh, a transit truck. The high risk inputs, the things we need to be worried about are certainly the trucks, pigs and semen. You need to know your supplier. Uh, feed bags. Feed bags are a huge, huge problem, particularly these large tote bags that uh, they're really hard to handle. They're dirty. Uh, I don't, uh, I don't, actually I don't want anything in a bag uh, coming into the farm. Uh, footwear is a, is a problem that if we're uh, worried about people's shoes that uh, we should, you know, foot baths are a joke. Uh, foot baths don't do anything for us. Uh, we should not uh, believe that a foot bath is going to protect us in any way. Uh, if we are worried, then we should have people changing their shoes. The tools used in pig production are a huge problem. Uh, pork products from outside the farm, they shouldn't come into the farm. We shouldn't bring, be bringing any kind of pork products into the farm. I'm not really, I'm not care, I don't care at all what the people are eating while they're outside the farm. This is not, uh, you know, this is not going to be a problem. The, uh, the, Stomach acid is going to kill the ASF virus, and the ASF virus is not going to be on your skin because you uh, uh, because you ate pork. If you think that people might have gotten contaminated somewhere where they ate pork, uh, uh, they're going to probably be contaminated even if they didn't eat pork if they go to those same places. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to worry about uh, pork products. But some people say that it's an you know it creates an attitude. Uh, uh, to me, it it uh, it demonstrates to your people that you haven't thought things out very well. But uh, however that that be, uh, we we don't bring any pork products into the farm. Uh, feed products that contain fillers such as rice hulls, wheat bran, corn cobs, this kind of thing. Some of those materials are handled in a very rough way, and those materials should be uh, heat treated. Uh, before you use them as fillers, uh, the, it's very important that the uh, that the vitamin and mineral companies are heat treating these products before they use them as fi as fillers. You can ask these kind of questions. Uh, people who have been in contact with outside pigs, pork products, outside trucks. These are things that are very very high risk. The truck wash personnel, uh, those people should not be coming back to the farm. They should be living somewhere else, not really having a, uh, any relationship with the farm itself. And soiled clothing. Uh, the dirty clothing is, uh, uh, you know, if it's, uh, there should be some place for the dirty clothing to go and to be washed and dried. A, a uh, clothes drying machine is very, very useful because it will also heat the clothes and uh, uh, reduce the contamination. So we, uh, I think that we need to have a, an electric dryer or a gas dryer. Uh, these have not been very popular in China because people think that they can just let it dry and the air doesn't cost anything. But, uh, you know, what is the cost of ASF? The near, near zero risk uh, I say that there is no such thing as zero risk. People say that people who say that uh, they want, uh, they're going to insist on zero risk, uh, they haven't, uh, they don't understand the situation. They don't understand the world. There is no such thing as zero risk, but the risk can be low enough that we don't uh, have to worry about it. Let's worry about the high risk things. The zero risk things are all, uh, are very unlikely to occur. It's the high risk things that, uh, that are going to be taking you out of business. The, the common things happen commonly. Fresh air is no problem. The ASF virus doesn't move through the air. Foot and mouth disease can move for hundreds of kilometers, but uh, 
uh, ASF doesn't move through the uh, air even for uh, several meters. It uh, is a big problem for, for the ASF to, vi to move so far as that. The ASF virus doesn't move unless people move it. The underground water supplies are a problem, are not a problem, are not a problem with underground water. Uh, underground water is not a problem. A packaged and processed food and drink, a cooked food, these things are not much problem. The low risk, pork eaten by personnel outside the farm, uh, who cares? It's their business. Uh, uh, people not in contact with pigs, who sh people who these people who showered and put on the farm clothes before they entered the farm, they're near zero risk. They, they take a good shower, get the, uh, get the virus off of their body, no problem. And anything you don't bring in certainly is not going to be a risk. And so what this means is that if you don't need it in the farm, don't bring it in. Some of the things that are not necessary are things like slippers. You know, cleaning the slippers is such a hassle. And who cleans the slippers? Nobody. Uh, mats, junk, all of the, some of these, so much junk stacked up around these farms. All that's a place for rats to live. The cell phones. Uh, what do they? You know, what do the workers need with their cell phones? Uh, they have them leave them outside of the pig area. The personal items. Um, you know, they, they they should be left outside. Certainly, no food inside the area where the where the pigs are at, the people can, if they need to eat, they can go back out, they can go back outside. Certainly they've got to have water, but uh, they may not uh, necessarily need to have anything to, uh, any food items uh, uh, inside, the, inside the farm. Those things should be outside of the farm area. Double barriers. We need the first barrier is to get into the general courtyard. You know, all the cars stop outside this barrier. Uh, the, the this first area might include the housing and office areas. Uh, uh, I would prefer that those be uh, somewhere else. Uh, second barrier to get into the pig area. The meals are cooked outside. You can stuff uh, process the stuff with glutaraldehyde. Uh, if you expose glutaraldehyde for thirty minutes. PMPS is also good, but it's damaging to fabrics, and it will. Uh, you don't want to repeatedly expose people to uh, to the strong oxidizing agent. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to uh, have the people soak their feet in uh, um, PMPS or have them uh, scrub their feet with PMPS. This is some of this stuff is uh, is nonsense. The bathing towels, and we keep need to decide where the clean side is and where the dirty side is for the for the bathing towels. Certainly, certainly. Uh, physical barriers. We just design our system so that we understand what pigs do and what people do, and that uh, these things uh, don't become an issue for us. The uh, transfer stations is a kind of physical barrier. A separate truck for the pigs. It's a that is a um, a physical barrier, the bench barriers, and where are the gate people at the gate? Where do they go? Sometimes the uh, people at the gate are completely out of control. Uh, they just wander back and forth, go everywhere, and assume that they don't. Uh, it's assumed that they don't carry anything. Uh, the uh, you need to have the gate personnel under control as well. So this is the example of a bench barrier system. Here we have a uh, we here we have a nice bench that the people have to step over. If they have to step over a bench, they'll respect that. If you just got a mark on the floor, and nobody's going to respect a mark on the floor, they're just going to walk back and forth over that mark. If you've got a bench that they actually have to jump over, uh, then it's uh, more of a problem. I mean, less of a problem. The, the so the the dirty clothing is left out here. They uh, they step over a uh, uh, this bench after they leave their shoes outside, and then there's some uh, uh, showering in whatever uh, area over on the other on the other side. Uh, I prefer that the, after they go through the through over the bench that uh, they go directly into the shower. But uh, something like this could be uh, could be okay. Also, it's not the difference between success and failure. The 
Here's another uh, bench system, but the people have got their dirty gloves here and some, some other material that's been brought in. It's uh, not a very well uh, managed system. You can see it's pretty dirty over here. Uh, I think this one is not uh, not particularly good, but it, again, there is a bench barrier, and with a little bit of, uh, of cleaning up, this could this one could be made to work. Uh, also, just a little bit of uh, a discipline required here. The closed herd concept: uh, the animals bring are coming into the herd all the time. Then that could be a a risk. Certainly, it's a risk for things like purrs and uh, and pseudorabies and classical swine fever. Uh, if the herd is closed to new introductions, there's a gradual improvement in health over time. The new animal, new animals are int introduced only then only by embryo transfer, by C-section, or by the uh, the snatch method where you induce sows to farrow and then catch the, catch them in a bag and bring them to the farm, you know, or semen, uh, semen only from PERS, PRV, and CSF negative uh, pigs. A lot of planning ahead if you're going to close the herd. The internal guilt multiplication uh, uh, not, is done, not uh, constant importing of guilt. Uh, even, we could even raise the terminal line bores inside the, inside the system it's, uh, uh, if you are able to plan ahead. A closed herds still need genetic infusions, and so it is, it is always a challenge getting genetics into a closed herd, but it can be, uh, herds can be managed with the closed herd concept for several years before there might have to be some refreshing, and during that period of time, they could enjoy relatively good health. The outbreaks of ASF are much easier to detect in pigs that are not normally sick. If the, pig were, if the farm is used to having sick pigs all the time, if they're experiencing normally high sow death rates, then whenever ASF shows up, they don't recognize that there's a problem because they're, you know, the sows are sick all the time. Uh, so we need to strive toward a high health pig production system and good biosecurity. So when if ASF should happen to... Uh, to intrude itself into the farm that we would pick it up very quickly and indeed it is possible to uh, to, to catch ASF in the early stages of the disease and remove the uh, the by testing and and removal you could remove uh, a few animals you could remove a whole building or maybe the buildings in, beside of it and not lose the whole entire farm uh, eliminating pseudorabies, PERS, and uh, CSF, it's certainly possible and it's definitely economic desirable. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, nonsense in the feed business, uh, particularly that's been promoted by the feed business that it, uh, why not be PERS positive? Then you would be protected against PERS in general. This is uh, garbage. Uh, there's, you know, there isn't any cross protection between these different strains of the PERS virus. Uh, you want to be PERS negative. Uh, certainly, Kansas State studies have suggested that ASF can survive in feed materials for an ex in excess of 30 days. In some kinds of heavily contaminated materials, uh, it's high protein items, uh, uh, things that have a lot of fiber structure to them, like corn cobs, these things could be carrying ASF for long periods of time. How does uh, feed become contaminated? The use of contaminated feed ingredients. We need to consider what are the high risk ingredients. Uh, certainly, corn and wheat that has been dried on the highway. Uh, wheat bran, rice hulls, corn cobs, soy hulls, all these things are high risk items. They haven't been very well taken care of. If you know how it's been taken care of, or if you know it's been heat treated in some way, then it might be okay. High protein ingredients also can be a concern because they can retain the virus if they get contaminated, and certainly some porcine source products that could be a very high risk item. This is an example of corn being dried on the highway. Uh, it's the uh, traditional way these things are done in China. Look what a, 
look what a mess this is. Uh, we've been able to PCR it off of the highway in Shandong. If you put the grain out on the highway, people are out there with their dirty shoes. Uh, you know, what is the chance that there's not going to be ASF virus in this uh, material? Dirty trucks, dirty shoes and clothing, reused feed bags, uh, even these large tote bags, use them one time and uh, get rid of them. Then you begin to realize what really is the value of these big tote bags. Uh, dust in the feed mill, dirty hopper grates are, uh, you know, these things are a problem. Russia has had a lot of trouble with ASF, the Cherzakovo system. They uh, have their feed mill workers uh, shower into the feed mill and put on the farm, put on uniforms and clean footwear to work in the, to work in the farm. It's really, uh, they're do using a high standard of sanitation. They monitor their truck drivers by GPS because they want to know where they go. Feed disinfection can be done. Formalin can be added to the feed as a mitigating agent at the rate of two and a half kilograms per ton of, uh, of standard uh, formalin. There are products that contain, uh, that contain formalin. Uh, it's uh, not yet approved for China, but it's been used for years in Europe. Yeah, formalin is not harmful to the animals. The animals make uh, uh, formalin methyl groups uh, every day, uh, more than what you're going to be putting in the feed, and it can kill ASF uh, at a low rate over a long period of time. It's considered to be a feed med mitigation. Certainly, it's something to look at. Uh, if it's the formalin is mixed with uh, things like uh, propylene glycol, uh, some organic acids uh, could bind the formalin and make it uh, less volatile. Feed mill disinfection, uh, cleaning with detergents and drying, disinfection with the PMPS or glutaraldehyde. Uh, we can monitor the sanitation of the feed mill with PCR for PERS, PED, and ASF. Uh, it's a good idea. The, also, uh, we can monitor for the enterobacteriaceae. The fecal bacteria can be cultured on uh, macaque auger. We could get a count of the coliforms and of the total bacteria and get some idea whether or not there's a good job of cleaning. Certainly, if there are fecal bacteria present in the feed mill, uh, we've got something to be concerned about. The feed trucks, uh, they, feed trucks and feed mill personnel should not enter the farm. I want the auger trucks to put the feed directly into a bin up over a wall. They have small bins for low volume feeds and uh, feed bags are always a problem. I, I don't want anything coming in in the bag if there's some way to avoid it. Appropriate actions when ASF is suspected. The notifications, uh, the uh, notify the animal health uh, disease control f officials, they need to know about this. They need to know what's going on, whether we need to tell them whether they want to know it or not. We need to tell management at some appropriate level. Uh, let's tell management what's going on, not what, manage well, what, not what we think management wants to hear. Let's tell them the truth, not what we think they want to hear. Notify the farms uh, receiving animals recently that ASF is suspected, uh, you know, but not yet verified. Uh, whenever we find out uh, uh, whether it really is ASF, then uh, we need to tell them that also. We need to notify our feed suppliers that we have a concern. Uh, people uh, should be able to, uh, uh, grown adults should be able to handle this. Quarantine, uh, we stop and hold the shipments of breeding animals and semen until the diagnosis is verified as being negative for ASF. We stop the movement of piglets and again notify the, notify the farms that got pigs recently and notify the, uh, the feed supplier. Chronic ASF is a, uh, is a real serious Oh, if AF, sorry, if ASF is uh, 
was strongly suspected or verified in the herd. We didn't need to remove any animals in contact with the verified and suspected cases. It is possible to, ca to catch the virus early if you've uh, got a high health herd and a high, uh, highly competent staff. Uh, you may be able to pick this up uh, very early on, and you could uh, stop it before it uh, takes out the whole farm. Sometimes uh, we've had situations where uh, there wasn't a, a high, there wasn't high health, there wasn't a high suspicion, and then whenever the uh, disease came, it very it it spread through the farm even sometimes for a couple of weeks before they told anybody, and by that time it was too late to do anything about it. Separate uh, clothing and footwear for the buildings that are sus suspected, maybe some different colors of clothing, and not foot baths, but changes of boots and clothing. The foot baths are not going to do anything at all for you. Chronic ASF is a real concern and is expected to be the ultimate sequel to vaccination. Uh, this uh, type 2 uh, Georgia strain will probably n not result in chronic ASF or chronic atypical ASF, but if we v begin to vaccinate, uh, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, uh, quite likely we're going to see uh, um, some real serious mixture infections uh, once people start vaccinating. Uh, I think an insistence on a no vaccine policy may be the only way to keep uh, ASF uh, from becoming a real problem as a chronic disease. Uh, China has been vaccinating for, for classical swine fever for 65 years, but before uh, ASF broke out, uh, CSF, classical swine fever, was the most serious problem that we had in China. Uh, of course, ASF has taken its place. Uh, well, it's taken its place in as much as it's much more serious, but we still see pigs with ASF and CSF. Uh, sometimes they have both diseases at the same time. Of course, it's not uh, very good. The output of pig farms, we need to consider what pigs, what pig farms produce, and if the farm, the, the farm has ASF, where does this material go? Where do the dead pigs, the manure, the garbage, the refuse, and the junk, where do the peoples go? Where do the people go? Where do the pigs go? Some of the procedures that people commonly do that are useless, uh, one of these things is fogging, that they put people in a room and they, and they fog them. Uh, I see that they put in some of these fogging areas uh, in Wuhan for the, uh, for the uh, coronavirus. I suppose these people haven't learned anything, but uh, you're not going to uh, uh, do anything uh, good by fogging people. It's dangerous to the health and you cannot sterilize the humans. Uh, so the alternative is uh, showering, a downtime, a, a bench entry system, uh, uh, changes of changes of clothing, uh, not engaging in any, any of this sort of uh, theater. Boot dipping it requires at least ten minutes of contact time and a, a, of a perfectly clean boot. You put a dirty boot down in. Uh, down in a boot bath, uh, it's not going to do anything at all. The alternative here is to change footwear. You've got you've got separate shoes for people. You have a bench entry system, not marks on the floor, not these sponge pads, not uh, lye baths or or lye crystals uh, uh, sprinkled around on the floor, or even no no boundary at all. We uh, we need, we just need to. Uh, uh, we need to have a good bench entry system, a system that makes sense, something that's logical. Boot dipping is not logical. Disinfectant spraying of dirty cars and trucks. Uh, this is ridiculous theater. I'm. I, I think these these are 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 not children. These are grown people who are spraying these dirty cars and trucks. They should be ashamed. Um, I feel sorry for them. They the surfaces. Uh, uh, must be clean first. Uh, the alternative is complete washing of the animal of the trucks, including <coughs> uh, 
the disinfectant spraying of dirty dirty cars and trucks is pure theater. Uh, these are grown adults that are out there in these hazmat suits uh, spraying these uh, dirty cars and trucks. Uh, I'm embarrassed for them that they re engage in such uh, uh, mindless activity. Uh, it's uh, it it's not. Uh, not funny, but it certainly is comical. Uh, I feel sorry for them. Um, but the, the surfaces have got to be clean first. It doesn't do anything to spray disinfectant on a dirty car or a dirty truck. The alternative here is to complete washing of, the, of these vehicles, in, including the undercarriage, some downtime for the trucks and microbiological testing, uh, exclude all unnecessary vehicles, and put feed over the wall into bins that uh, the trucks don't come in, feed trucks don't come inside the farm. Ozone uh, doesn't do anything. The hospitals have abandoned the, the use of ozone. They don't kill these tough viruses. The use of ozone is just theater. We cannot make the kind of ozone that is required to kill the African swine fever virus. So the alternative, anything that's unnecessary in the farm, we keep it out and we wipe down or dip uh, the risky items uh, with, dis with disinfectant. Well, we get a positive disinfection. The use of dry formaldehyde gas. Formaldehyde can be effective if used on a warm and wet surface. That uh, the, the gas itself is unlikely to penetrate dry bugs. So we, you know, if the gas gets into the, it dissolve, redissolves into water, then it can act on the on the uh, on the viruses. But if you're just putting it there dry, that's not the way that it's done. The alternative is to exclude all unnecessary stuff, a wipe or disc, dip risky items with uh, disinfectant or wet down the items to be disinfected. And that might be possible with some kinds of hard equipment, but certainly feed bags, you're not going to do that. So it, uh, the, the feed bags are always a problem. Wheel dip baths, uh, this is absolute nonsense. The contact time is short, the truck is still dirty. So we need to uh, uh, give up on all kinds of uh, disinfection theater, completely wash the truck and the undercarriage and the wheels, wash the top and the bottom of the truck, clean the cab, and then disinfect with some strong oxidant, and then go park the truck somewhere and let it dry. There needs to be some downtime. The high risk items here, these are the things that we need to worry about. Feed bags, the dead animal trucks, the manure hauling, and the pig hauling trucks. It's not the vegetables that, are, that we need to worry about. Uh, it's not the food that we need to worry about. It's uh, the, these high risk things are, the, are what, it, what it's going to cause the problem. Salvaging the ASF infected farm. Uh, first of all, an early detection is so important. Uh, we need to have a confirmed diagnosis. Uh, uh, if there, we have some signs of fever, abortion, animals off feed, then we need to do some kind of a nucleic acid test. There, this, these, uh, it could be, it could be a PCR test. It could be a lamp test. Uh, the separation of affected and uninfected groups. Until we get the diagnosis confirmed, we want to, to reduce or eliminate the possibility of it spreading any further. It's not going to spread through the air. It's only going to spread on the farm if people are carrying it. Uh, strict sa staff segregation, uh, different colored clothing. Sometimes it's too late to save the sows by the time that somebody notices the problem. Uh, the incubation period, however, is three to fifteen days. We can keep this uh, keep this in mind. If we can get it stopped for uh, fifteen days or so, uh, we may have won the battle. Consider seriously how uh, ASF got into the farm. Usually, it's a truck or a feed bag. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's pigs, but uh, I suppose uh, most of the time it's a truck. Uh, certainly sometimes there's some sort of a feed bag involved somewhere along the line that was dirty. The feed itself probably had been clean, but they contaminated the bags that the feed was in some way or the other. 
Uh, if the people are showering and changing clothing, changing their boots appropriately, uh, it's probably not how it was transmitted. Certainly dirty boots and dirty clothing are a concern. The post-processing feed management, how, did, how was the feed uh, uh, handled uh, after it was uh, uh, after it was processed uh, and how to manage grains on the highway. I don't know how we can uh, deal with that problem. Uh, they, we, we cannot allow people to gr dry the grain on the highway. We should not be purchasing grains that have been dried on the highway. Restocking a depopulated ASF farm. Number one thing, how did it get there to begin with? We need to be honest about this and uh, decide how did ASF get on the farm to begin with. This is the uh, this is the most important thing that we need to consider. How did it get there in the first place? If we don't know how it got there in the first place, we're not going to know how to prevent it the second time. A re there, typically, there's some remodel and repair that needs to be done. Some some. Uh, uh, after you take the pigs out and you look at the facility, you realize uh, how bad a shape it is. That uh, gosh, this place is a junkyard. Uh, we need to do some improvements. Uh, maybe remodel the farm. Make, certainly make some repairs. Uh, some damaged equipment, obsolete equipment. Uh, upgrade the biosecurity. Go to some some kind of uh, segregated production instead of continuous flow. Uh, all in, all out. And all these areas of concern need to be remedied. The indoor manure pits and manure channels they need to be cleaned and drained. Um, sometimes, if you can clean, take up the slats, that would be great. Sometimes that can't be done without damaging some very valuable equipment. Uh, it is possible to uh, to clean up the facility without destroying the equipment. Uh, rodent control. Very important. We need to, to control the rodents. We have to have no uh, grass, no vegetables planted, no flowers and trees right around the farm. Uh, uh, those things are all pretty, but they they are create a place for, for rats to live. Uh, we need to defoliate the surroundings and surround the facilities with rock wherever possible to give the rats no place to live. Uh, we might consider reorganizing some of the older farms to growing and finishing instead of having sows there. Uh, don't think that there's any reason to uh, some of these very small farms should be farrowing sows. Maybe they can may, they could have some growing and finishing pigs. Uh, cleaning with an alkaline detergent. Uh, as we said before, the alkaline detergents can uh, damage aluminum. And so if you're dealing with aluminum, you may have to use, to deal with use some kind of a uh, some kind of a phosphate product on uh, on uh, aluminum uh, rather than an alkaline agent. A special attention to the corners of the building, a cleaning of the living quarters. Uh, if the people are living uh, inside the farm courtyard, uh, I don't think that you need to make any special treatment of the books and the papers. Uh, those things are not going to have much ASF virus on them, and it, if this virus is exposed to air, it is going to die. It won't uh, live very long unless it's covered by, uh, by blood or protein. Of course, if it's covered with blood and protein, uh, it can live for uh, several months. Certifying the depopulated ASF farm. Uh, enterobacteria test to make sure that it's just this is just simply a test of, of basic cleaning. If we didn't get the cleaning done, then probably we didn't uh, we're not uh, not ready. Uh, there's probably no use to do an ASF DNA test, no use to do an expensive PCR if you didn't get it clean. Uh, but it's certainly then a PCR PCR or lamp test uh, uh, can can be used to. Uh, uh, to test for uh, uh, for the presence of the ASF virus. Uh, certainly, if you find the virus, then uh, we've got a problem. A uh, downtime, whenever it's clean and dry, probably uh, we're ready to go back with pigs. You've cleaned it, you've disinfected it, you've dried it. Uh, the USDA said that uh, uh, experiments they did way uh, back in the 1970s uh, 
with not the good disinfectants that we have now, uh, clean and disinfected, put the pigs back an hour later, everything was fine. Um, we don't need to, to have these farms down for, uh, for six months to satisfy somebody's uh, notions of fear. You can put in sentinel pigs. We've done that uh, at least three weeks with sentinel pigs. Uh, you know, if the sentinel pigs die, then you know you've got a problem. Um, the uh, sentinel pigs are a good idea to make, you know, if you feel uh, it can certainly improve your confidence. And uh, if the sentinel pigs survived, uh, uh, then you, you're probably okay. They uh, usually will PCR. The, of course, the first one, first thing is whether or not they get sick. You can also PCR the, the sentinel pigs. You can do an antibody test to see if they, uh, if they became seropositive, uh, they pass all those things were okay. And sometimes if you're really worried, you could, uh, fin instead of putting sows there, which is a big investment, uh, you could finish a group of growing and finishing pigs on the site three or four months. And, and uh, if, if that uh, goes by okay, then you might uh, dare to put sows back. And I would avoid restarting farms where there was a problem with wild boars or whether you might, where you might be concerned about ticks. Uh, if you can't uh, keep those things under control, uh, probably the farm should just be closed. The manure pits, nothing, not a real concern. Uh, there's no real remedy that you're going to be able to do that makes any sense. Uh, just put a, a fence around the manure pit and tell people not to go there. It's the way that we do things that causes us trouble. And what ASF has shown to the pig industry is that uh, the methods are not particularly good. You can't do things in a wrong way and expect good results. We need to examine the system. The reason we've had so much trouble with ASF is there's been something very seriously wrong with the system. If we are not getting the results that we need, we need to go back and examine the system very seriously and uh, find out what's wrong. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, my name is uh, Wayne Johnson. My email address is uh, EWJ, EWJ, E W J at pigs dot ag. You can send me an email, and if you've got any questions or comments or rebuttal, I'd be pleased to hear from you. Thank you very much.